I think it means you got to take care of basketball and don't foul. Don't foul. Stay out of foul trouble. So Rutgers coming off the overtime loss against Michigan State on the road. Had a chance to win it. This guy did Sanders in regulation, but missed a shot. Lost it in OT. And Ohio State. Many people call the surprise of the conference off to that 5-0 start. Freeman will let it fly, but it's nowhere near. Nice to say, don't say it. So I just shut up after that one. <laughs> Freeman, though, averaging 12 points and eight rebounds. One of the top rebounders in the conference. He's not like he can't shoot. That just came off a little funny. So now Ohio State will try to do better with their first offensive possession. Jay Sean Tate. Strong to the basket. Jay Sean Tate uses his body way too well. And Issa Chom is not going to stand a chance if it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. You've got to keep him from getting a catch where he can do work around the basket. Tate making his 94th consecutive start in the Buckeye uniform. Sanders leading score, 14 a game over the talented freshman Baker. When you play well, you gain momentum. I mean, even in a loss, you can gain momentum. Look, I, I know you want to win the game, and the focus has to be on winning, but you also want to play well. So I do believe there are, to some extent, more victories. I think Nebraska and Kansas, they lost by one. So we can't a really good Kansas team. I think in a way, that's a moral victory. Yeah, and I, I think if you had Steve Peichel on the polygraph after that <laughs> Michigan State game, he would say, hey, this is a big building block for us. It sure is. That's a deep post touch for Caleb Wesson. You cannot let... Him. First Big Ten coach to start 5 0 in their first year since Tom Davis, way back in 1986 when he was the head coach at Iowa and started 6 0. And he didn't even really expect this. It doesn't mean that you don't want this and won't work for this type of success, but you know, he's patient in the process. And it's hard to believe that it didn't take this long for these guys to really get the system, get the fundamentals, and play so well together. The communication defensively. You see Deshaun Freeman doing work and getting leads the basket. The communication defensively has been so good for Ohio State. I think that might be one of the most impressive things. That is a better shot for Deshaun Freeman around the basket. Dangerous cross-court skip. Gets to Tate. The southpaw. Here they go back into Wesson. He wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. He just faces up. This is off the glass. Caleb Wesson, a freshman. And this man, Geo Baker, a freshman on the other side for Rutgers. Two of the budding stars of the league. He's a job. I think you've got to find a way. Is this a job? It's a look. Doesn't get him to go. I think you've got to find a way to get Corey Sanders going early. Because I, I think Corey Sanders loses interest if he's not making plays. Open three. Williams, no. Ohio State hit 17 three-pointers last time out against Maryland. And this is where you've got to dig down. You can't allow him to do that work. Well, he missed it, but on the other side, easy lay-in for Wesson. He, he missed it because you've got to bring defense over to at least contest the shot. But, again, ISO situations in the post, you've got to get it out of his hands. He's just too strong. He uses his body so well. Deshaun Tate maybe being a little overshadowed by all the hoopla around Kata Bates Diop, and deservedly so for Bates Diop. Deshaun Tate is kind of like the Swiss Army knife for this team. Not like he's not used to it. He's been overshadowed his entire career in Ohio State. Yeah, he has, but he has been a good one. And someone that Chris Holman has relied on heavily this year. Wesson trying to show the rain. In and out. It's only the ninth three-pointer he's hoisted this year. Splitting the defenders. How about that for Corey Sanders? Uh, he, he makes great highlight plays, but what I like is he used a ball screen in transition, and you got to credit Steve Peichel getting him an opportunity early in this game because, as I said, if he gets opportunities early, he stays interested, especially on the defensive end. Well, he was really interested in that game against Michigan State. He's been over 20 his last two against the Spartans and against the Badgers. Shot clock at seven. Here is the Swiss Army Knife tape. for the Scarlet Knights in their home building. 
Freeman clearing it out. He wants to take Bates D off. Instead, he kicks it back out high. Sanders never shot. Missing off the left side. I love that turn. Never shot. <laughs> That's a man that will put it up any time, any place. And if H.D. up, you mentioned getting Corey Sanders going. Obviously, Ohio State needs to get H.D. up. Oh, Ohio State's getting good looks, but they're only getting one look. So you got to credit Rutgers for taking care of rebounding on some of these jump shots that aren't fall. And that is a strength of Rutgers. They don't shoot the ball well, but they defend and rebound well. Baker had it rejected by Bates Diop. In transition, catch and release, C.J. Jackson. How about C.J. Jackson? He comes into college, everybody talks about how great of a scorer he is. He didn't really score at all last year. He struggled, just couldn't really get things going. No rhythm, shots not falling. This year, it seems like anything he shoots goes in. Yeah, last year, John, 179 points for him. This year, he's already had 247. That's an improvement. But a long way to go. No answer on the other side for Geo Baker. Over the top for Wesson, and he was being held on to over on the bench as well. Bates Diop will score this 0 for 2. Offensive rebound, though, those are hard to come by against Rutgers, however. Or a driving kick opportunity. First that, one, that one just looked row six, seat seven, actually. <laughs> First turnover of the game for either team. Suf Mitz has been getting more time off the bench. He has it right now. Doesn't score much. He's strong, good with the ball. Five on the shot clock. Baker realizes it. Steps back and fires and buries it. Sometimes it's easier to make a tough shot with the shot clock running down. There's less pressure. I'd rather shoot that than a wide open three with all the time in the world. Think about it. They love the future that Geo Baker has. Well, I think Geo Baker is the future. He is the future of this program. Yes, he's got great class coming in, but it's all going to be around Geo Baker at the point. He's had some freshman moments, though. Just one of nine, five points against Michigan State. Can you imagine that in this conference, having a freshman moment? No, never. Especially on the road against Michigan State. Come on. Look, you don't understand what it takes. We talk about the good habits that, that Steve Peichel is trying to bring to this program. It's a challenge to bring that every day, you know, to go to class, to get your classwork done, take tests, you know, handle your stuff on the road. It's a grind. It really is. Candido saw not known much for his offense. Tried to go block to block to Dorson. Between Wesson and Baker on either side here in this one. A couple of substitutions for Chris Holtman. Tate back in there. He goes right to the basket as it's swatted by Saw. That's an offensive foul. Out of control, Cam Williams. The post changes how you're able to cover the entire team. You have to be concerned with that entry pass. You have to be concerned with where he's at. If, if your man's playing high side, you've got to protect the back side. I think it's just been a different offense with Caleb Wesson on the bench. His brother Andre is out there defending the ball right now, 24 in the Scarlet jersey. Caleb Wesson could be really good, too. I mean, he really reminds me a lot of Jared Sollinger. I think as he continues to develop, proves his fitness even more as guys at all. Anybody that says they would be here is full of it. No. And they've never done it. I haven't done it, and I know I'd be terrible. Well, I refereed a pity ball game once, and had parents yelling at me. No, no, no thanks. Fadeaway shot. Deshaun Freeman, no. Nice offensive board, though. Shaq Dorson. The big body inside. Leo Baker so dangerous off the dribble. Nice slip and an easy deuce. Eugene Omaruyu. The execution for Rutgers has been there because they're moving the ball side to side. As the ball moves side to side, defense forced to close back out, take that next pass away. And Omaruyu just slides under the defense. First lead for Rutgers. And Ohio State has missed six of their last seven shots on offense. Lisa Jallo into the game, freshman from Bloomington, Indiana. Up top to Micah Potter, and the sophomore buries it. It's amazing 
how much a key asset you are if you are a five man that can shoot the basketball, but also move the basketball. If you can shoot it and move it, it is really hard to play position defense, especially with bigs. Well, Potter averages right around three points a game, and he got it there in one fell swoop. Freeman off the hesitation. Ripped down by Jay Sean Tate. So you're saying he's done? I think he's got a little something there. Maybe he's got more. <laughs> it's only the second three-pointer he's hit all year. But as you said, he can shoot it. There's a bad pass by Tate to Nova. Foul on it. You want to just get an easy two by using the basket to protect yourself from the ball. Sanders. Athletic move to get there, and then a wild shot. You know, Sanders is funny because you got to live with some of that. That's part of what makes him good. He doesn't go off and keep you in the game against Michigan State if he doesn't have that little chip in him. He put up 23 shots against Michigan State, 19 against Wisconsin. Wesson that time off the side of the backboard. He just lost position there. I mean, he was in he was in a good spot to make a play, just didn't realize where he was in terms of where the basket was. Omaruyi, blocking foul. Jay Sean Tate. Both of them are in pretty good position. Yeah, let it go. I think the only way is if you lose the basketball, then I blow the whistle. Yeah. But I mean, again, the gray area is not accepted in this profession. Issa Chom, the skinny, tall drink of water. He can shoot it from the outside. Rutgers fans letting him know the shot clock is late here. So Baker rises and then air balls it. Seems like Ohio State's getting stuck. On Thursday before they just absolutely blew the Terps out of the water. That's the fourth turnover. Well, moving the ball to the other side of the floor and getting it back is the way to, is the way to enter the post. With one turnover for Rutgers, and that's what, an area that they're very good. Plus 4.4 in turnover margin. Tops of the conference. Deshaun Freeman a little dipsy do, but he can't fit it. Andrew Dockage. Had 11 points last game, brought it up. Crowd wanted to travel. Kata Bates Diop is 0 of 4 from the field. Yeah, they've done a great job playing Kata Bates Diop, but they've also done a great job of rebounding missed shots. What good is a good defensive possession if you don't get the rebound? Freeman. One on one with Andre Wesson. Bates Diop jarred it free. And Wesson found his brother, Caleb. Now Bates Diop through traffic. That didn't take too long. He's going to find his opportunities. You just have to find a way to get the ball out of his hands. It's, it's disrupting what he wants to do in Andrew Dockage. Speaking of disrupting, got it up there with a left hand and scored it. Timeout. He communicates really well. He, he said he brings life and energy to a team that last year was kind of lifeless at times. He was recruited by Chris Holtman when Chris Holtman was at Gardner-Webb before Butler. And then when he was the head coach at Butler, Chris Holtman, he used to spend every Wednesday on Dan Dockage's radio talk <laughs> show in Indianapolis. And that, of course, is the father of Andrew Dockage. So a relationship was formed, and he ends up at Ohio State for his final season. And here he is on a leak out. Taking it up over Baker, but he cannot get it to go. That's inside. Omaruyi, no, but contact. We need that. I think we over an asset out on the floor. I've seen a lot of really good basketball team, and you build good culture to hopefully have good chemistry. Approaching six to play in the first half. Ohio State has had that 7-0 run streak snap by the free throws from Omaruyi, and then they start a new streak. Kata Bates, Diop from downtown. You sleep on that back cut from Andrew Dockage. Why? Because he cut hard, and it, and it froze Omaruyi just on long enough for Kata Bates, Diop to get a look. Bates, Diop has five. The star on the other end is Sanders off the heel. Bates Diop one more time. Yes! And another timeout from Steve. Since then, they've hit four of their last five shots. You also look at that first shot for Kata Bates Diop. It, it's the hard cut for Dockage cutting back to the basket. But it's set in a screen. If you want to get open, set a screen. Bagging off Mensa. Lisa Chom needs some trouble. 
Vince in trouble now. He does find Freeman. And it's blocked by Bates Diop. Did reset the shot clock, though. The ball hit the rim. Job known for his outside shot working inside. Keeps the possession alive for Sanders, but nothing dropping right now for the Scarlet Knights. Well, just not getting good looks. And the Ohio State defense has been in position. Why not? Ohio State defense has been in position. You've got to move the basketball to get the defense scrambling, get the defense chasing. You are easy to defend if you allow a defense to stay in position. They're dictating what you're doing as an offense. Rutgers has now missed their last 10 shots. Inside, here's the big boy, Caleb Wesson. And they do such a good job of clearing, letting him do work. Great job of vacating the area by everyone else on the floor that's wearing a red jersey. What is it at, at John, at BTN John Crispin? I just want to make sure at everyone Brandon has it. Galvin. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt they're Achilles here. Well, some of the tough times, you're in tough games when guys like Corey Sanders make big shots, tough shots, and you've got to be in games against high-level competition by getting yourself easy looks, by sharing the basketball. It's a decent look, although Freeman, he said it earlier, that imagine if you can come in in year one and turn things around so drastically. It's not just, you know, bringing talent in, oh, well, we got enough talent to win. No, you got to get them to play well together. You got to get them to buy into a system. Trust you, trust themselves, trust one another. It's a lot that goes into it. Rutgers goes zone there. Offensive rebound. There you go. That's the problem. You say it all yep. the time with the zone. Zone, you are not covering a man. You're covering an area. And when you have guys that are flashing that low post area, they always put themselves in position to get an offensive rebound, not being checked out by an individual. And it was the freshman, Kyle Young, with the bucket. He had not scored in the last five games in the field. Sanders blowing by Dockage, but Dockage poked it free. MCA move, right? When, you, when your playing days are over. Freeman has to put it up into the hands of Kyle Young. The streak continues 12 straight missed shots for Rutgers. And an easy deuce inside. Nice pass from Jackson to Young. We think of defensive pressure as disruptive, but defensive positioning is as disruptive, if not more. You take away all your options, and you're forced to move the basketball, play with counters, make reads, when the defense is always in position. 18-2 is the run right now for Ohio State. Once again, they're working this shot clock late, but failing them out, Corey Sanders. Well, Corey Sanders had room to work. He actually had space. He still was forced to make a tough shot, though. First field goal since the 10-46 mark right there for the home team. That's the thing. It's not just that Ohio State's winning. It's how they're doing. They're just so disciplined. Dockage, he hit three of those against Maryland. And go back to simplifying things. You know, Chris Holtman takes over. It. Does he come in and say, this is who we're going to be 10 years from now, so let's be that team now? No, he says, look, this is what I want to build here. So it, it takes trusting in this process. Well, the Philly people appreciate that. Trusting the process. Uh, but it does. It takes, you know, trusting that building a foundation is going to get you to where you want to go. And I think the hardest thing about that is getting some of these... We're telling us... Some of the people in Columbus were talking about this year kind of being, well, oh, rebuilding your yada, yada, yada. They said, no, no, we got some of those seniors who expect to win, but they don't want to go out on a rebuilding year. Yeah, and he said that right off the bat. He said, look, I look at Jay Shante, I look at Kata Bates Diop, and I go, oh, and Cam Williams, like, well, we can win right now. There's no reason why we can't win right now. I don't think we should approach the season as if it's just a rebuilding year. It may very well be in some ways because you're rebuilding something new, but you're, you're putting the foundation in first. Movement, no touchy, whatever you want to call it. Well, if it is a rebuilding year, it's a heck of a rebuilding year for Ohio State. No, and I always think... Oh, that was a near travel by Bates Dia. That's always an interesting one, too, rebuilding year. With a new coach, it's a building year. And it's not a rebuilding year. You know, very... Archie Miller isn't just rebuilding what whoever knows, Bobby Knight and everybody else who's coached there has done. No, I mean, there's tradition there that helps. How about that? 
On the baseline of the slam for Bates Diop. I mean, you're building your own program there within an institution that has tradition. And yes, you've got a foundation in place, but it's a completely different system. It's a different way of going about your business. Third three-pointer that Freeman has put up tonight. He's missed all of them. Young saved it, but he threw it to the wrong man, Jack Dorson. He knew he did something silly there, too. Last thing you're supposed to do is keep the jack and get the luck. Got it off. 20 more minutes from Piscataway. Settle in. You know, and it's not that you're being out-schemed. That's the thing. Like, it's not as if uh, the specific plays work so much better against Michigan State, and that's how they will win. Yeah, they're just disciplined. They're dialed in. They're patient. They're poised on both ends of the floor, and there's no time wasted. Go at the guy with three fouls. Yep, and there you go with patience and poise from the young freshman. Wesson now has six points. But the key there is getting out of the way if you're not the guy with the basketball. And so you can give your teammate an opportunity to make a play. Remember, Rutgers battled back from down 12 at Michigan State to force overtime earlier this week. And the block by Kata Bates Diop. And now he'll try to hit from the top of the arc. Offensive rebound, though, on the tap out from Wesson. Everything right now going in favor of the Buckeyes. John Tate, he is strong for a 6'4 body. There's just nothing. He looks like Robert Johnson again. <laughs> At Northwestern, they're struggling. Of course, Minnesota having their issues. They'll be playing tomorrow night at Penn State right here on BTM. It just shows you, you just simply can't predict what's going to happen, particularly in this conference. I, mean, I thought Northwestern would follow it up. Same, basically same team from last year. Yes, different where you're playing home games, basically on the road in Rosemont. But an experienced team just can't figure it out. Baker got it right back after having it rejected. In Minnesota, you just can't bank on those things happening. Boy, Rutgers cannot buy a basket. Well, they haven't got an easy look. It's frustrating. It's demoralizing. And if you do get easy opportunities, you've got to capitalize. Kata Bates-Diop has four blocks. And Freeman fell, so Bates-Diop gets great position. And Ohio State starting to run away from Rutgers here. Sanders. Frustrating shot, and that leads to a run out for C.J. Jackson. No, but the putback, yes, for Jay Sean Tate. I mean, I gotta say, this Ohio State team, again, there's, there's nothing in particular that you look at. I, I say outside of Katie Bates Diop, which he's a real talent. He's an NBA level talent. I think now that he's figured that out, he's playing at a high level. There's nothing in particular that they're doing that you would say, oh, that's going to be really hard to stop. They just play great defense. They share the basketball. They move hard. They cut hard. They make good passes. They don't turn it over. Do all the things right. Five rejections now for Baker. First time they've been 5-0 in league play since 2011. Wow. The ball keeps rolling with Cam Williams. And Cam Williams has changed his game, too. I mean, he's bought into being a better defender. And to say he struggled defensively is more as if he just didn't want to play defense. I get it. He's the bucket guy. But if you want to play significant minutes and have a significant role in this team, which you know, now you want to make sure you have an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament, yeah, you can play defense. Three to shoot. Job Hoyson. One of 11 from long range. Six of 37 from the field for Rutgers. Jay Sean Tate, nice kick. Ohio State, they just look so confident. Sue Minson with a block out. Uh, they're not pressing in any way, and I don't mean pressing on defense. I just mean, you know, they scramble out of double teams so well they figure it out. College guys, are, oh, wow, I want to find somebody that wants to go out there and compete. I mean, you look at the bench right now, and they do. It doesn't mean you're okay with losing, but, but you're going to learn a lot more about your guys when they compete. Yeah, right? You learn a lot about your guys and how they handle struggles and adversity. Well, so far through six games of Big Ten play, this being the sixth, nobody has had a tougher schedule than Russia. 
one and four with a record, but they have been there in a lot of them. There's an easy bucket inside Caleb Wesson. Caleb Wesson just holds his position. Again, doesn't rush it. Ball comes his way great. If not, he's there to get a rebound. They were saying one of the biggest things that has helped Caleb Wesson this year is that sometimes in practice he gets to go against Greg Oden, the number one overall draft pick in 2007, who's a student assistant coach back getting his degree. Well, how about the fact that Greg Oden was out there walking through, doing walkthrough, and I forget who he was at the moment. He was Mamadou Ducour. Mamadou Ducour, yeah, there you go. I just looked up, I looked at you, it's like the number one overall draft pick is out there on the floor right now on the scout team. They say he's great for the locker room, he's great for these guys, he's got great energy, he's positive. You know, I, and I think there's a humility there that helps you uh, as a team. He's the number one overall draft pick. There's no one on this floor right now who's going to be the number one overall draft pick. You've got that in your locker room, there you go, finally break it. Asa Chong gets himself a basket to go. and. I think there, there's humility gained. There's perspective gained from seeing that. This is a guy who's playing the piano on the ESPYs with Justin Timberlake. <laughs> he did it all. He, he had commercials. I mean, this guy really had it all. So I think there's good perspective gained seeing that. The hard work, the fact that he's coming back to school to finish his degree. There's a lot of perspective gained there. You saw him on the end of the bench. He does travel with the team. As a promise to his mother that he would finish his degree. He's got about three semesters left. He's a student assistant coach at back. He's got great leadership on this team. And you don't really have that guy as Darius Turner. You look at Jay Sean Tate, he plays harder than anybody in the conference. That's a lead by example. Dockage got all the experience in the world. He's been a part of, you know, what the, what Dockage went through last year with the plane crash and then coming in and, and being a part of that team that wins the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Again, great perspective from this group. Rockets back out there this time, though, with Williams getting fouled and hitting the three to add in. The detail that gets you this type of lead. Five against Michigan State. Yeah, I mean, it, it has been impressive sequence after impressive sequence. There is nothing that, and I think that's what allows you to establish depth, too. If there's nothing in particular, that's, I guess, Jay Sean Tate, Kata Bates, D up. Different story. I mean, those guys are our key players, but if you have guys coming off the bench and they fit into what needs to be done based on the principles of a defense and the offense, the, the simplistic ideals of the offense. That on Andrew Dockage. So his second personal foul ball stays with Rutgers. Baker. There you go. Baker knocking down the three. Just the eighth field goal tonight for the Scarlet Knights. Good look, good read. I mean, Geo Baker makes the read. Dockers tried to go underneath that. He's just got a trail tight. But you're right. I said they wouldn't run the table. Who knows? I don't think it's likely, but the way they're playing. And look, Michigan State with the two losses. Who knows? And look, there's still room for improvement. Lucy Giles, the guy, he's going to improve. He will improve. I mean, he's a guy, a ton of upside. He can play one through three. He's going to continue to improve as he gets comfortable and as his role, I don't want to say it's, it's diminished, but as it gets more and more simplified for him, I think he's going to improve. And next thing you know, you got eight, nine, ten guys you can trust to put on the floor. Rutgers showing some signs of life. I just think. Those teams need to get credit for how, not just competitive, but how good they've been at what they do. Also, Indiana with a win against Northwestern. They're also 4-2 and two in Big Ten play. Chomp. Well, three straight made field goals for Rutgers. Oh, look, missed shots is contagious. Bad energy is contagious, but so are made shots and positive energy. So far, the past few possessions have been good, and it looks like the uh, starters are coming back in the game for Ohio State. Yeah, eight straight points, and Chris Holtman said, okay, seen enough. And this bump will... It's actually a bit of, bit of a pick-me-up. Again, they're going to get that ankle diagnosed tomorrow. There was so much blood in... In sports, it's just the way it goes. Dockett's trying to save it. Save it job. Well, Rutgers on a mini 8-0 run here. The police department. I believe in Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken, Sue Baker gets to go. You got you don't understand with officials. Everybody hates officials. A lot of these guys have normal jobs, man. Real jobs. They get yelled at in their real job, then they come get yelled at in this. But you gotta think he's got great perspective dealing with what you deal with in law enforcement. Then, 
get yelled at by guys like Tom Izzo and everybody else in the defense. Data Bates, Diop cannot stop the 10-0 run, so hold the phone here. Rutgers making a charge. Baker, once again. Big. Signs of life. Again, that's what you're looking for if you're Steve Peichel. Who's going to compete? It just takes a couple opportunities, and now the defense is dialed in. They were down 30. The crowd's back in it. Ohio State turned into the young buck. And he delivers. That was good defense. I think at some point you've got to force the ball back out. You've got to get the ball back out. It can't be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Baker, he's got the hot hand. Here he goes again. Offensive rebound. Because he had to win with fundamentals. Now I think as that fitness improves, he's going to get that much better. That last possession around the post, though, great footwork. Put him in double figures with 10. He's a charm. He's a good outside shooter. Rutgers had made their last five shots before that possession. Two doctors, guys have been around forever, really. C.J. Jackson, the junior, in and out. I also think with Bates Diop having to sit out, you learn so much about the game when you sit out. Game seems to slow down, and I think that helped in his development. Fadeaway jump shot, good. Corey Sanders doesn't need much space. If you gave that dude a wide open three, I bet he misses it. If you let him <laughs> mix you up back and forth and take a fadeaway three, I bet he makes it. He had a similar shot like the one he just hit to try to win the game yep. at Michigan State in regulation, but it rimmed off. And they would fall by four in overtime. There's a tough finish for C.J. Jackson. Good balance, good sit down. But attacking the paint because of all the pressure applied, trying to take the ball or keep the ball from, the, from a post-entry pass. Sometimes you overcommit to disallowing that pass that you end up giving up a drive. That's going to be a foul on the dribble handoff. Leading all scores with 14. Pressure being extended. But it just has felt like a different Rutgers team these last five minutes. Well, I give him credit for fighting, too. I mean, this game was getting ugly there for a while. 15 points at the half. But they've continued to fight, and now they're really trying to make a game of this. Bates Diop, he has something to say about that, but it rolls around and off. Like I said, I love Suf Mensa in this game. He's going to have to play a more significant role with Mike Williams being out. Baker, no, and then Stephen. You get pumped up. You clearly don't like the Eagles, but you might want to check for a pulse. And if don't <laughs> stop believing, plays, and you don't get up a little bit off your seat. Well, they're sending a message to the crowd here that this one isn't over yet. Look, the team's sending a message. They fought back. And regardless of what happens in this game, they showed a lot of fight. They showed grit. You want to see that, but... You're also playing without Mike Williams. Uh, you don't have that off the bench. He's one of your best rebounders, if anything else. Crafter that just had such bad body language in terms of the chemistry of the team and whether a guy's going to bring great energy. You can't predict those things all the time. His brother Kai last year collapsed at practice. High school basketball player had to be brought back by a defibrillator. So he has been through a lot. Okay. Again, emotionally, you may not see it. You know, they always say still waters run deep. The guy's competitive. You know, you can't compete if you're not like that. If they're said C.J. Jackson to the line. Those last, that, that was actually a three-game st stretch that spanned two seasons for Michael Red. Man, I got bad memories about Michael Red my freshman year. Welcome to the Big Ten, son. Well, when you were at Penn State? You... Yeah. We, we beat him Big Ten tournament somehow. I don't think I did anything, but... Having to cover him, Scooney Penn. <laughs> Made me look silly. <laughs> Morris Peterson, A.J. Guyton, Luke Wrecker. All bad words in my vocabulary. <laughs> from back in the day, five to shoot. Here goes Sanders. He realizes the shot clock. It's his time to shine. The bank is open late in Piscataway. 
sometimes need a little luck to get things going. And they've been there. They've competed here in the second as bad as it got. But they brought life back into the building. Steve Peichel says his teams will always compete for 40 minutes, but that's tough to stop. 17 now for Bates Dion. And the release is so high. He's not a high elevator. He doesn't elevate really high on the jumper, but the release is so high, so he's going to be able to get it off against pretty much anybody in the conference. Dockage. Extra pass into the corner. Offensive board. A nice pass, Wesson to Bates Dion. Uh, I mean, that interior. You not see this coming. Get out of here. Get real. Chris Holtman didn't see this coming. You know, you, you, you hope that what you do today puts you in a position to win. But you don't bank on it every day when you just got here in June. And you're trying to get concerned with recruiting class because you're taking over a, a job late. You know, you're, you're worried about whether guys are going to be able to play well together. You, you want to make sure everyone's healthy. You bring Dockage in late. I mean, he's become a key piece on this team. And they had some hiccups non-conference. They didn't just cruise right through Gonzaga. They struggled against him. They lost to Butler, his former place of employment. The losses to Clemson and North Carolina. Understandable, those are good teams. But they've really turned it on in conference play. One of the biggest challenges for a coaching staff. So the coaching staff has to show these young guys why they need to buy in. So part of it is failing a little bit. And I think they did that at times in non-conference play, but as they see what makes them successful, they buy into it even more. And I think the buy-in is there right now. And if it's not, something's wrong with you. Nice turnaround jump hook by Eugene Omarui. He has six. That's a good sign because the last five games, he's only been averaging about two points. Everyone's going to need to step up a bit, as you said earlier, with Mike Williams out. It's not just stepping up offensively. It's, it's on the defensive end. It's rebounding. Dockage tried to get creative, and then it's thrown away in the corner. A leak out, Geo Baker. I don't know that I saw the slam coming. That was nice from the freshman. Got an offensive leg. Yeah. He took off his right leg, finished with his left. That's not easy to do. Generously listed at 6'4. That might be a high heel. Short from K to Bates Diop. And here's Baker. This time attacking. Almost had his own miss. Wes, the same thing. For a young big to be as patient as he is, working in the post, maintaining possession, allowing the ball to go around the perimeter, much like Isaac Haas has been able to do. So much worse than that. Well, you also I this feel year, cheated, you, you, honestly, for all the elbows and knees I took. You can't have your legs wider than your shoulders this yeah, year. Yeah, no, I, I know. I mean, to me, that's silly, though. That's not a strong position. Is that strong position? So, so I'm going to stand there and allow dude to run into me, but keep my feet close together, you're out of your mind. <laughs> now, I'm not going to stick a knee out. You don't want to hurt anybody, but you want a strong enough base. C.J. Jackson has nine points after that last basket. And the difference in this game was the first five minutes of the second half when Ohio State pushed the lead. Two shots for Omar Ruyi. Tip basketball 2018. You new things that you didn't know about guys and coaches. Good storytellers, those guys. They really are. It's not just like a production. It's, it's telling a story. You know, bringing some reality to what you're seeing here on the floor. Jackson. Nice kick to the corner. And that opens the three-point door for Cam Williams. What is the three fingers tapping the head? I, I mean, is it... I don't really know what that means. Someone tweet at me, please. Tell me what that is. I got some help from Scarlett and Gray earlier. <laughs> Twitter's not all the bad thing, I guess, you know? Sometimes it's cyberbullying. Other days, it's productive stuff like Scarlett and Gray. Sanders now has a Baker dozen after his mid-range jumper. Someone help me out with that one. What is the three fingers? I know what three goggles is, but... I think they're just saying, look, I made three points, and I'm going to tap myself in the head to show you. Two minutes to play. It's over six o'clock. Ohio State on their way to a 6 0 start. There's a no call. Bates Diop. 
discussing earlier that block charge call that seems to always be called, but they're letting a few go here late, and then they do whistle that moral loss, you know, moral victory. Well, they're going to drop, though, to 1-5 in conference play, but we'll say it again. They've played by far the toughest schedule so far in conference action through six games. And on the other side, Ohio State's going to stay perfect. Chris Holtman's going to get to 6-0 in his first year as a Big Ten. To say, I mean, all they do is win, win, win. It's an expectation that's set. So you want guys that have had that success. They understand you don't just have that success because you have great players. You have that sex success because you have great habits, because you, you take care of the things that you can take care of to put yourself in a position to win. That's what good culture really is. So, yes, that's a culture guy. That's an expectation guy. And a guy that understands what it takes to win at a high level. Yeah, Terry Johnson is one of the all-time great guys. He's a great recruiter, too. And they've already got some good ones coming in next year to Columbus. You know, and Dad Mott has always done it the right way. You know, something Dad Mott was always proud of. He recruited hard. He didn't do what a lot of things that are out there, uh, that a lot of other programs have done recently. And... I think you've got to be proud about that. And if you're Ohio State, you, you know you've got the right guy in that seat right now, and you should feel good about the, the direction of this program. It's like Rutgers should feel good about the direction of their program. He's Dean Peichel, the extension that he's got to keep him here. Final seconds of the game here, and a block three to shoot here for Ohio State. Been really good teams that have lost six, seven straight in this conference. Minnesota last year, well, I think they started 0-6 in conference play, but they certainly turned things around. So you've got to stay with that attention to detail with a positive mindset every time out in practice. Andre Wesson with the three-pointer, putting the icing on the cake. Final seconds. Chom, no, and that unfortunately is kind of indicative of how the night went for Rutgers.